I'm Donna Blanchard, and this is your ThinkTech Daily News for Wednesday, March 1st, 2015. Japanese leaders announced that they will not be a founding member of the new Chinese-led Asian Development Bank. The United States has also been invited to join but declined, citing concerns with governance and that this new lender will undermine the World Bank and International Monetary Fund, two pillars of the global financial order established by the United States after World War II. Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said it is important for strategic reasons that Japan stick with the United States, even when other allies like Britain and Germany have announced they will join the new bank. Prime Minister Abe was quoted by Kyoto News saying, the United States now knows that Japan is trustworthy. United States officials have urged their allies not to join the new bank, but Australia, South Korea, Britain, Germany, and dozens of others joined by the March 31st deadline. The decisions of so many allies to ignore the request from Washington is a testimony to the perceived financial clout of China, which has quickly become the largest trading partner in its region. Another March 31st deadline was the one self-imposed by those in Lausanne, Switzerland, discussing Iran's nuclear program. That deadline was extended to today and may be extended again, though Secretary of State John Kerry renewed his push for an accord today after a telecom teleconference with President Obama last night. Britain's Foreign Secretary told reporters today, fingers crossed and we hope to get there during the course of the day. I think we have a broad framework of understanding, but there are some key issues that have to be worked through. Some of them are quite detailed and technical, so there's still a lot of work to do. But we are on it now and we'll keep going on it. If you Google a simple guide to the nuclear negotiations with Iran, you can get yourself up to speed on some of that technical detail. If you were driving on the island of Oahu yesterday, I don't need to tell you that the traffic was phenomenal. On the very day it was announced that our traffic is the third worst per capita in the nation, we seem to vie for first place when both of the zip mobiles broke down. Those are the large vehicles that move barriers to create zip lanes. Traffic backed up from Waianae and Mililani all the way through town. Commuters reported travel time as long as five hours from downtown to Makaha. For those of you who don't live on the island and think people who live in paradise don't have much to complain about, please note that that five-hour commute was about 35 miles long, and a backup of this magnitude was totally unexpected, which means that along with disrupting dates and other recreation last night, people were unable to get to work, take care of health needs, and pick up their kids from school and child care. In a news conference this morning, the state's deputy transportation director for highways, Edwin Sniffen, said that repairs on the vehicles are expected to take place today. There are necessary electrical parts being flown in for those repairs. Mr. Sniffen took full responsibility for the lack of communication and apologized for not informing the press yesterday morning when the Zipmobiles ceased functioning. Then we all might have been able to make alternate arrangements. I'm Donna Blanchard, and this has been your Think Tech News for Wednesday, April 1st, 2015. Ahoy ho!